we are tracking, which of course is the swearing in of the Vice President Jadeep Dhankar, who will be sworn in as the Vice President shortly. Remember, he was the NDA's candidate. He will be taking on from Venkia Naidu. Some visuals already on our screens, him interacting with dignitaries. You do have uh, the Home Minister uh, Amit Shah there and other dignitaries as well. I can also see the ex-president Ramnath Kovin. But today will be, of course, a crucial day as you will be having the swearing in of the vice president for India, the new vice president, Jagdeep Dhankar, who in fact was the NDS candidate. He previously has been the governor of Bengal as well. He being greeted by various uh, dignitaries today as he will be taking the oath of the vice president very, very shortly. Remember, he was up against the opposition's candidate, Margaret Alva. There was a fair share of politics as well because, remember, the TMC had abstained from voting and that time the reasons given by them were that we were not consulted as far as the opposition's candidate is concerned. So we decided it was better for us to stay away as far as that voting is concerned. Today also, uh, we're picking up its possibility that the TMC could be skipping as far as this oath-taking ceremony is concerned. But as I said, all of this in the backdrop of the political war of words that we had seen, today you will be having Jagdeep Dhankar who will be being sworn in as the next vice president of the country. And he, of course, will be taking on, as I pointed out, from Venkia Naidu. He will also, of course, take over as the chairman of the Rajya Sabha. And this all will be administered uh, by the newly elected president herself, Draupadi Murmu. But as I pointed out, because of the political ramifications that we've seen as well, uh, what we're picking up by the means of sources is this, that the TMC is also unlikely to attend the event because there had been a friction when they had abstained from voting as far as Jagdeep Dhankar versus Margaret Alva was concerned. Also, it is a well-known fact that West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee didn't really see eye to eye with Jagdeep Dhankar owing to his continuous criticism of Mamta government during his tenure as the West Bengal governor. So now visuals on your screens, you have the next vice president of India, Jagdeep Dhankar, who is going to take oath very, very shortly. And that oath will be administered by the newly elected president, Draupadi Murmu. He, in fact, of course, will also take over as the chairman of Rajya Sabha. He will be taking on from Venkia Naidu. We had seen that emotional farewell of Venkia Naidu just a few days ago. Visuals on your screen, so where is dignitaries who were greeting the new vice president? But first, let's really talk about the political ramifications. My colleague and senior editor Pallavi Ghosh now joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Pallavi, do we have a confirmation now whether the TMC is attending or not attending as far as this event is concerned? Well, TMC has decided to skip the oath of the vice president. Uh, the politics behind that is very simple. I mean, we know that they've had a very bitter past. And I think that bitterness is going to spill over. Uh, many would argue that this is not the way to begin the, his innings uh, with the Trinamool Congress because at the end of the day, he remains a constitutional authority. And the Trinamool Congress remains one of the most aggressive and vociferous voices inside the Rajya Sabha. And therefore, they would also have to do business with the vice president. It's not about the personal differences. It's about respecting the chair. And I think the beginning, if, if it's going to be so bitter in the days to come when the next parliament session takes place, which is in the winters, is certainly going to be extremely acrimonious. But the reason, of course, given by Trinamool Congress is that they want to get rid of this notion that just because they decided to abstain for the polls for the vice president does not mean that they were helping the BJP. Their opposition to Jagdeep Dhankar remains because they feel that he was very, very unfair and he had provide, provided disrespect to the chair which he had brought with him, which he occupied as long as he was the governor of West Bengal. You know, Pallavi, before we talk about the political ramifications, let's just talk a little more about who Jagdeep Dhankar is. We've just seen the Prime Minister also reach for the oath-taking ceremony. Talk to us about the backdrop as far as Jagdeep Dhankar is concerned. Well, he's a legal luminary. He has an excellent legal brain. He's also supposed to have an excellent sense of humor. So in that sense, he carries on the legacy of Venkaya Naiti, a jat leader from uh, Rajasthan. So 
clearly the BJP is also trying to target that constituency in the upcoming Rajasthan elections. He's also had excellent amount of administrative experience. Uh, immediately before this, of course, he's been a governor of West Bengal. So he brings that experience to the chair. What are going to be his challenges? Well, as I said, the only difference which is there now between the opposition and the government or the NDA in terms of the number of seats in the Rajya Sabha is actually shrinking. There was a time when the NDA was far, far behind. But clearly the BJP is catching up because it's winning elections in many states. So roughly around 10 to 15 seats kind of difference is between both the sides, which means that both the sides are going to be equally belligerent, equally aggressive. And Jagdeep Dhankar's challenge would be to ensure that the House runs peacefully. And second, most of the bills get cleared and passed. We saw the last session which ended uh, in which Mr. Venkai and Naidu came out with a statement saying that he's very disappointed with the fact that the legislative business was not up to the mark. I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges which is going to be faced by the new vice president and also sending out a message to the opposition that you cannot dictate the way the house needs to be run. Pallavi, I want to talk to you about why the NDA thought Jagdeep Dhankar was a fit. Uh, I do remember him being called the Devi or Sajjano. But talk to us about why the NDA had their hopes high with Jagdeep Dhankar. Apart from the very obvious reasons that he comes in from Rajasthan, the Prime Minister and in fact Mr. Amit Shah, all of them call him a Kisan Putra because of the family or the legacy he comes in from uh, uh, and the fact that he has a legal background which could come in handy as far as throwing the rule book at uh, those who oppose him inside the house. I think politically also it's a very strong messaging which he's trying to send out not just to a Trinamool Congress, to pretty much the opposition that we think and we support him, what he did in West Bengal. We certainly don't agree with the TMC, which feels that his record as a governor of the state was actually very much sullied. He was less of a constitutional authority and more behaving like a politician or to use the words of the TMC, an agent of the centre. Clearly, he has a complete backing, the vote of the BJP. And as I said, and we've been pointing this out, Rizima, that's going to be his biggest challenge, to actually carry forward the political message of the BJP, that the BJP may not have the numbers or the brute majority as they have in Lok Sabha, but they're not going to be cowed down. Legislative business has to go ahead. The political messaging also has to go ahead. You know, Pallavi, we've just seen visuals of Venkaya and I do also walk in as far as the ceremony is concerned. As Jagdeep Dhankar takes over as the 14th vice president of the country, what is the legacy that has been left behind by Venkaya and I do? Well, I mean, Venkaya and I do, um, for all of us who've covered the parliament, uh, very amicable with his one-liners, which the prime minister also, of course, referred to. Uh, and, uh, you know, his record has been pretty good in terms of getting a legislative business passed. But the credit goes to him as much as to the flow management by the BJP because uh, we would be privy to the fact that on key legislations, for example, like Triple Talaq, the BJP managed to get political parties either to abstain who were not a part of the NDA or actually to end up supporting for them. Bengal Naidu also shares a very good rapport with most other political parties and that